Now I'd like to welcome Arleta Boyka, Eastern Bloc expert. Thank you for joining us today on TVP World. Thank you very much for the invitation. Nice to be here again. It's great to have you. Now um, we hear we have a spy problem here in this part of the world, in Central and Eastern Europe. But really, uh, how much of it do we know at this point, and, and how much do the counterintelligence services, well, how much do they know that we don't know, uh, and how big is this problem? The problem is really big, and it didn't start yesterday. Uh, it is a problem which we've been dealing with for many years. And uh, it's in different or many dimensions as well. Because if we say espionage, we think about embassies, we think about people that work in these Russian embassies all around Europe. But we also have to think about it uh, as about media that are paid from Russia by people connected with Kremlin. We had very recently um, one case which was connected in Czech Republic and in Poland. And actually it was about one website which was called in a very innocent way, the voice of Europe. And people we all know, politicians were invited to, to express their opinions there, but in fact, it was uh, financed from Russia by former Ukrainian oligarch, which is now uh, in Russia because he was first uh, detained in Ukraine and then exchanged uh, with Russia. And he is paying. He was paying for for this website. And this website, its aim was to divide societies, uh, to um, undermine uh, undermine. Uh, trust to European Union, and it may not be espionage as we think about it, uh, gathering information, secret information, but it's also a Russian influence. It's a Russian influence as well. When we talk about politicians which are paid from Kremlin, which are invited to Russia, which are invited to, to live in expensive hotels, which are invited to Crimea to legitimate uh, Crimea as a part of Russia, which Crimea is not, as we all know, according to international law. But when Western politicians are appearing in Crimea and they are paid for that, this is a corruption, a political corruption uh, in, in, in a clear sense of this word. Now, we've seen um, when we have Russian elections and we have these so-called observers that go to Russia and, and give legitimacy to these elections, at least for domestic consumption, I mean, shouldn't that be the first like list of people that we look at as being potentially compromised, potentially paid off by the Kremlin? Um, does that lead us closer to discover these networks of people that are peddling Russian influence? It probably should be, especially that now it's uh, very easy to, to to check. It was more difficult when uh, there were there were no sanctions on Russia and many politicians were were going to Russia. Now uh, everyone that appears there is uh, actually under suspicion of of being a Russian agent. Uh, and we had a case uh, last last year, if I remember correctly, when. Ukrainian specialists, um, somehow, I, I am not a specialist in that, uh, were able to find emails sent from uh, an employee of uh, Russian Duma and Russian parliament. And from these emails, we could have also a, a full list of people that were paid for, for example, having pro-Russian initiatives in European parliament, in uh, national parliaments, in local uh, maybe not parliaments, but uh, any kind of, of, of local governments, they were paid for these initiatives to have them on agenda, and they were paid extra if these initiatives were um, implemented. And we have some regions, for example, in Italy, that said explicitly that Crimea is a Russian territory. And from these emails, we could know that it was Paid. This initiative was paid, and then these people that made it implemented were paid for that by Kremlin. 
I wanted to just go back to your uh, previous uh, answer. Uh, and you said that this website, Voice of Europe, uh, primarily wanted to uh, fuel distrust to the European Union. And obviously, we understand that the premise uh, of uh, this work was paid for and initiated by, uh, by the Kremlin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just for our viewers, I just wanted to ask you to explain, perhaps, the difference of this kind of work versus, perhaps, a legitimate website that would, perhaps... Cr uh, uh, perhaps create uh, just a wide variety of opinions that would perhaps, you know, just be Eurosceptic, for instance, as opposed to the the sort of... Uh, Funded by Russia. Like, exactly. How are we supposed to determine what, what um, you know, where the line, I guess, is being crossed? Exactly, yeah. because it can get very blurry, and obviously, you know, most people get their information and form their opinions via the Internet these days. It is very difficult to find this line. And what I would advise is uh, reading like really trustful sources, which are media in full sense. I mean, media that we know that uh, that's, we can see that there are many different opinions that have uh, many articles every day, not only one article in a few weeks. Because when I, I, I was checking this site, Voice of Europe, and it was not so much content, content in there. So it, it, for example, for me, it was strange. So if we see something strange, that there are not too many content, it not, not, doesn't look like any other website where, where, it's, where and many articles appear every day, it should ring a bell. And uh, I, I really, I'm a big fan of uh, media education, which should be actually from from the primary school which which should be implemented because we don't at this point we don't learn our children how to deal with this disinformation which will be uh growing the problem will be only growing and we should be uh teaching children and students and we and and, and adults as well education, 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 because there are people that are specialists on this information, not only from Russia, also from China, it appears in Poland as well, that we have local, or we have websites that look like local websites, but in fact, they were Chinese websites and they were not as harmful as these ones founded by Russia, but still, China is also checking something. China is checking how they can influence our societies. So we should, find ways to defend ourselves from that. Indeed. Right, absolutely. Well, Arla Tavoyka, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your insights into this matter.